Shalom, Shalom, Israel. It's your brother Shammai One here, back here with another video. First and foremost, I'm going to give a call. Hello, Yom, La Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. That means all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Right? And today, we're back with another 12 tribes video, 12 tribes breakdown. We only got a few more of these to go. Right? And today, we're going to be going into the tribe of Issachar, right? And we're going to be proving through biblical prophecy and through history, right, that these uh, people today are the so-called Mexicans, okay? The tribe of Issachar today are the so-called Mexicans, right? So without further ado, let's just get right into it, right? Genesis 49 and 14, we do know Genesis 49 is the chapter in the Bible that helps you identify which tribes would be who today due to the prophetic uh, messages inside these scriptures in Genesis 49, right? So Genesis 49 and 14 is dealing with Issachar, right? So Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, right? Okay, the ass, an ass basically means a donkey, right? When it says Issachar is a strong ass, right? A strong donkey. Okay, the donkey, burro, is one of the most enduring symbols in Mexico and has been celebrated in Mexico for the past 40 years by tens and thousands of Mexicans. The tribe of Issachar is associated with a donkey slash ass. It is no coincidence that so-called Mexicans today hold the burrow or donkey in such high esteem. I mean, it's no coincidence. It's Bible prophecy, right? But let's learn a little bit more about them celebrating uh, the burrow, right? So in Mexico each year, tens of thousands of people celebrate an unlikely hero, the Mexican burrow. For the past 40 years, just outside Mexico City in the town of Otumba, they commemorate all things donkey with a donkey parade, donkey polo, donkey races, and the crowning of the town's very own Miss Burro, right? So this is going to show you how, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How associated with the donkey the Mexicans are, and that's why the scriptures liken them onto one, okay? Let's keep going, right? And it says, it said that Issachar was a strong ass couching down between two burdens, right? A burro, it's a small donkey uses a pack animal, literally. A, a animal that carries burdens. That's literally the definition of a burro when you look it up. Okay. The tribe of Issachar is not only associated with a donkey, but also one that is used to carry burdens. This describes to a T the Mexican burro that is celebrated by Mexicans annually. No coincidence. It's all Bible prophecy, right? Mexicans today are Israelites from the tribe of Issachar, God's chosen people. You see what I'm saying? Next, Genesis 49 and 15. Right. And he saw that the rest was good and that the land, that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulders to bear and became a servant unto tribute. OK, so he saw the land was good and bowed his shoulders to bear and became a servant on a tribute. Right. So when the tribe of Issachar came to the Americans and saw that the land of Mexico was pleasant and beautiful, they settled there in Mexico. The tribe of Issachar would set up what we know now as the Aztec Empire. See? The Mexicans today, modern indigenous Mexicans today are descendants of the Aztecs, right? The Aztecs are Israelites from the tribe of Issachar, just like indigenous Mexicans today are Israelites from the tribe of Issachar, right? So they will come here and set up the Aztec em empire, right? Let's keep going. Let's, and just look at the land of Mexico, right? These beautiful sites that you find in Mexico, especially this pool that's like underground in like a cave. I remember when I first saw that, I was so amazed. I was like, bro, that is so cold that's fire man right it's a beautiful land it's a pleasant land right pleasant beaches coastlines all that man you know right and then when you look at the aztecs there's no doubt that they're israelites you see what i'm saying this is what they set up uh this is just them walking around and things like that and you can see them wearing fringes right numbers 15 38 that's a law in the bible that the israelites were to wear fringes the aztec woman wearing them right the aztec men wearing them too in this picture on the bottom left okay so let's go into the Aztecs a little bit, right? The Aztecs, okay? The Aztecs were avid sky watchers and were very skilled in astronomy. Their skill to be able to read the stars and tell time by them was something they had going back thousands of years. So anybody knows that the Aztecs and the Mayans, right? The Mayans had this as well, but right now we're dealing with the Aztecs. The Aztecs were known for their astronomy and being able to tell and be able to tell things by looking at the stars. Let's see who else was able to do that, right? First Chronicles 12 and 32. And the children of Issachar, right? The tribe of Issachar, this is the tribe that we're dealing with right now, which were men that had understanding of the times, 
to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. Now, I said they had understanding of the times, right? Let's see what that means, right? As you can see, it's a little blurry, but this is the Jansenius, right? Hebrew child lexicon, right? And it says First Chronicles 12 and 32, the same word that you see there for times, those who know the times, astrologers, without a shadow of doubt. The Mexicans today are Israelites from the tribe of Iskar, no doubt about it. You see what I'm saying? The same way that the Aztecs came over here and were skilled astrologers and astronomers to be able to tell things by looking at the stars is the same thing that the tribe of Issachar was known and skilled to do amongst the children of Israel. You see what I'm saying? This is Bible prophecy to a T. Well, not even that specifically isn't Bible prophecy, but it shows you the historical uh, abilities that these people had going back all the way down back to the time when we were in our land. You see what I'm saying? Amazing, right? The scriptures don't lie, man. So-called Mexicans are Israelites from the tribe of Issachar, right? Let's keep going. Okay. And it says, when he got to that land, he bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant on the tribute. This is quite obvious, right? In the land of Mexico, Aztecs built an empire and a comfortable living environment amongst themselves, right? They bowed their shoulder to bear, right? But the Aztecs ended up becoming a service on tribute due to the colonization and conquest of the Spanish conquistadors during the 16th century. I mean, you see what I'm saying? This is this is Bible prophecy. Literally, the Aztecs come to this place. They set up an empire, but then they become a servant on tribute. How the white man comes from Spain and takes them over. Right. Hernan Cortez. I remember learning about him in um, middle school and uh, middle school. Right. Not elementary, but middle school. You see what I'm saying? Right. The Spanish. Right. The Spanish conquest of the Aztecs. OK. The Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, also known as the conquest of Mexico or the Spanish Aztec War, was one of the primary events in the Spanish colonization of the Americas. There are multiple 16th century narratives of the events by Spanish conquerors, their indigenous allies and the defeated Aztecs. So the Aztecs got defeated by the Spanish conquistadors. And this is historical accounts linking up with the scriptures. And that's how we know this is true. The Bible will give a prophecy and we can see in history that these prophecies that were written thousands of years before it happened actually happened, man. You feel me? The Lord does not lie, man. Right. His word doesn't go and come back void. He gives a prophecy and it happens. OK. Just like this prophecy that would happen to our uh, Mexican brothers and sisters right under the Aztecs. Right. The Battle of Tenochtitlan, right. May 22nd, August 13th. 1521, right? It's a military engagement between the Aztecs and a coalition of Spanish and indigenous combatants. Spanish conquistadors commanded by Hernan Cortes, I mentioned him earlier, allied with local tribes to conquer the Aztec capital city of Tenochtitlan. Cortes's army besieged Tenochtitlan for 93 days and a combination of superior weaponry and a devastating smallpox outbreak enabled the Spanish to conquer the city. Cortez victory destroyed the Aztec Empire and the Spanish began to consolidate control over what became the colony of New Spain. And what these colonizers would do after they would colonize these people and take down their kingdom is they will make them servants, right? They will make them servants and they'll make them slaves, right? They did that in Mexico. They did that in Central America. They did that in um, South America, namely Brazil. You see what I'm saying? They would do that and make them slaves. And that's exactly what Bible prophecy said would happen to our people. Right. Mainly because we fell away from the law, statutes, commandments that the most high God commanded us. And he allowed these things to happen. Right. But let's keep going again. Mexicans are Israelites from the tribe of Issachar. Right. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Bible, man. God's chosen people. OK. Right. The tribe of Issachar. Right. Deuteronomy 33. We also know is another chapter in the Bible that helps you identify who the Israelites are today based on the prophetic messages in these scriptures. Right. So it says, and of Zebulon, he said, rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. Now, we're going to go into the tribe of Zebulon next. But right here, it shows you that the tribe of Zebulon and the tribe of Issachar dwell next to each other. So you should already have an idea of who the tribe of Zebulon is, right? But we're going to go into that next, and we're going to further expound on that verse, right? But verse 19 is the point, right? It says, they shall call the people onto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of, right of righteousness, right? For they shall suck of the abundance of, of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sand, right? They shall suck the abundance of the seas, right? As you can see, this is a Mexican oil rig. 
and they're getting their oil from below the uh the seas man right off the gulf of mexico exactly what the bible says they're going to be getting they're going to suck the abundance of the seas the oil the riches that they get from this oil is coming from the seas quite simple not a big deal right and then it also says that they are going to uh get treasures hidden in the um in the sand meaning it's going to be underground right so these are uh zinc mines right underground collecting zinc okay i mean there's no there's literally no coincidence here that the scriptures say these things and it applies directly to the mexicans today is because they are these people that the bible speak about and anybody saying that is a liar and an agent trying to ca trying to cause division between the black hispanic and native american communities man right again uh mexicans today are israelites from the tribe of Issachar, no doubt about it. Anybody who says anything contrary to that is against God and is against the Bible. All right. And, that, and that's it, right? But with that, I'm going to say, uh, call Haloyim, like Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai, right? Uh, Shabbat Shalom.